On the Soul, Kitab al-Nafs in Arabic, is a key philosophical treatise by the Persian polymath Avicenna, also known as Ibn Sina, 98-1037 AD. In this work, Avicenna explores the nature of the soul, its connection to the body, and its role in perception and knowledge. Avicenna begins by distinguishing between different kinds of souls, plants, animals, and humans, all of which have a different level of soul, with the human soul being the most complex. He posits that the soul is an immaterial substance that animates living bodies and endows them with life, growth, and the capacity for various biological processes. The vegetative soul, according to Avicenna, is the most basic type and is responsible for nutrition, growth, and reproduction. This soul is present in all living beings, including plants, and operates almost entirely on an instinctual level. The animal soul adds to these basic functions the powers of perception and movement. Animals, therefore, not only grow and reproduce, but also interact with their environment in more complex ways. This soul is responsible for sensory perception and the sensations of pain and pleasure. Avicenna explores the interconnected nature of sensory data, processing within the animal soul, and the role of the common sense, an inner sense that unifies the five external senses, and the imaginative faculty that stores and manipulates images. For humans, the rational soul is the highest form and includes rational thought on top of vegetative and animal functions. Avicenna sees the rational soul as immortal and capable of existing independently of the body after death. This aligns with his belief in a soul that is not material in nature, departing from Aristotelian thought that the soul cannot be separated from the body. Avicenna discusses the process of abstraction in which the human soul, through intellect, can grasp universal concepts and engage in reasoning. He makes a distinction between the potential intellect, the capacity to think, and the active intellect, the process of thinking and the actualization of thoughts. The active intellect, which is akin to a divine light, illuminates the human mind, enabling it to perceive abstract concepts and forms. In On the Soul, Avicenna further delves into the faculties of the soul, their interplay, and how the soul comes to know the external world. He explains that knowledge begins with sensory perception, where the external forms, e.g. the shape, color, size of an object, are captured by the senses. These forms, devoid of their matter, are then processed by the internal senses, the common sense, the retentive imagination, and the compositive imagination, which store and combine these sensory inputs, leading to the formation of memory and experience. Avicenna's epistemology incorporates the idea of intuition and the sudden grasping of knowledge through the intellect. He postulates that the soul has access to certain innate concepts that do not derive from sensory perception, but are imprinted on the soul and simply await activation by the active intellect. In this way, he brings into harmony the Platonic notion of recollection and the Aristotelian emphasis on empirical observation. Regarding the soul's connection to the body, Avicenna argues that while the soul is an independent substance, it is nonetheless intimately connected to the body which it inhabits. He uses the analogy of a craftsman using tools to explain how the soul influences and commands the body, yet is not defined or limited by it. Avicenna also addresses the issue of personal identity and self-awareness, claiming that individuals are aware of their own souls through introspection and consciousness. This self-awareness is immediate and does not require the mediation of the external senses. He suggests that the soul's knowledge of itself is a fundamental aspect of human existence and not dependent on its relationship with the material body. In the domain of psychology, Avicenna assigns the soul responsibilities for emotional responses and explores the influence of the physical on the psychological. He considers how physical imbalances in the body's humors might lead to changes in emotional states, reflecting an early understanding of the mind-body connection. Avicenna's discussion on the soul's faculties also covers the imagination and estimative powers, which handle complex associations and judgments not directly related to sensory data. For instance, the estimative power allows animals to have perceptions that involve more than mere sensory experience, such as the sheep's instinctive fear of the wolf as a predator. The rational soul's pursuit of wisdom and its connection to the divine is another key theme in Avicenna's treatise. 
Through knowledge and understanding, the soul can achieve a level of connection with the divine, transcending the material confines of the body. Ultimately, the soul's perfection comes through its intellectual endeavors and its pursuit of truth and knowledge, both scientific and metaphysical. Avicenna contributed significantly to the development of later medieval philosophy in both the Islamic world and in Europe. His ideas about the soul influenced subsequent Islamic philosophers, Jewish thinkers like Maimonides and Christian philosophers during the scholastic period. On the Soul by Avicenna is both a psychological and philosophical masterpiece that encompasses a comprehensive view of the human soul. By bridging earlier philosophical traditions and con contributing his unique ideas, Avicenna's work provides a sophisticated account of the soul's nature, capabilities, and ultimate destiny. The treatise not only serves as a critical source of medieval Islamic philosophy, but also provides insight into the intellectual transition from Hellenistic philosophy to the flourishing of reason and metaphysics in the Middle Ages.